Hello and welcome to the cruising altitude. If you are new here, welcome, welcome on board. Um, and if you are a visitor or an existing visitor, uh, let me know down in the comments. I would love to know if you're enjoying my videos, um, if you have any ideas of how I can improve them. If you would like to learn more about other types of travel, um, I have traveled on things other than cruise ships. However, cruise ships are now my favorite way to travel. Um, yeah, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, a quick reminder that I do have a blog that's www.thecruisingaltitude.com. In this video, I'll specifically be talking about whether or not I think the Edge, the Celebrity Edge ship is worth it um, and how it differs to other ships within the Celebrity and perhaps Royal Caribbean fleets. One thing I will say here is we um, embarkation happened in Civita Vecchia in Rome, Italy, and uh, we were travelling with my grandmother, who is in her 90s, very mobile, but not so mobile that she wants to walk for, you know, miles and miles and miles down, getting on coaches and stuff from parking lots and so forth. So we had reached out to find out whether or not we could drop her off at the front, um, perhaps with the cases, and she could wait, you know, inside for us. Uh, that wasn't a thing. Um, it became extremely difficult, in fact. We were told by one person, go straight through, it's fine, you can drop her off, fantastic. We go through in the taxi, and then we get there, and we're told, no, we can't, so we've got to turn around. It was a whole mess, and nobody really, it was like the people outside the gates were saying one thing, the people in like the middle part, once you were first past that first gate, were saying something else, and then they were turning us around, so it was a complete mess outside. However, that's nothing on celebrity, obviously, they don't have anything to do with the port staff, um, but a little bit disappointing nonetheless, and I do think that port staff and the people inside the terminal can make or break the start of your cruise, right? If you get somebody that's a little bit lacklustre, maybe a little bit hangry, maybe having a bad day, and they, they kind of like transfer that negative energy, or whatever you want to call it, onto you, um... Yeah, it kind of puts a downer on something that you're excited about. So we were a little bit disappointed, you know, especially being on, like, the Celebrity Edge, and we were expecting this sort of a seamless uh, start to finish between the moment we got into the port and to the moment we, we, we scanned our cards, our CPAS cards on the ship. Um, but the port staff made that a little bit of a poop, if I can say that. <laughs> I couldn't think of a word. But, yeah, a little bit disappointing, however. So one thing I would recommend if you're traveling with people uh, who do need assistance, I would definitely call ahead to the port just to double-check things because left arm definitely didn't know what the right arm was doing. However, since I'm making this video, you know I made it onto the ship. You know my nan made it onto the ship. We made it onto the ship. Okay, so let's let's get started on the ship. So the Celebrity Edge's inaugural date was December 2018 and I was working on a cruise ship at the beginning of 2019, not the Edge. However, most of our cruise ports crossed and so I would often see the Edge docked in other ports around the Caribbean, um, maybe Europe as well. I lost track of my ports, however, I uh, would see it all the time and it stood out. The ship stands out, now maybe because it had a lot of media attention, um... Maybe because I just wanted to change, I'm not sure. But there was something about that ship that I wanted to go on it. And lo and behold, come June 2019, I was on my contract break and I went on the edge. As you may or may not know, the Celebrity Edge was actually designed by British interior designer Kelly Hoppen. Um, and you can see little touches of this uh, like art deco, minimalistic art pieces that were kind of scattered throughout the ship um, that look fantastic. However... Some of it gets a little bit lacklustre after a while, um, perhaps a little bit empty is a good way to put it. Um, one thing I noticed, like here's a perfect example here with the bathroom where they've got roses that float around. This is an image, so that those float, those roses would float around the sinks and like they were um, projected on. So that was pretty cool. And this one here is well, this art piece here. So. The decor was lovely, however, sometimes it lacked a little bit of heart, you know, it reminded me of walking into like an empty uh, wooden floored penthouse apartment, like don't get me wrong, stunning, but just lacks a little bit of heart sometimes, you know, I found it to be a little bit more what's the word? Can I say hoity-toity? Does anyone know what that means? It was a little bit like they were trying to be like upmarket, like uh, up a level from other celebrity ships. And I think celebrity are always, they're all, they're kind of up there, right? They're kind of your middle class, I would say. Um, 
but certainly this ship just seemed like they were trying a little bit extra, which I don't know. I wasn't into it all that much, to be honest with you. I, I prefer the kind of a heart of a ship. My favourite ship so far has been the Celebrity Equinox and then the Celebrity Eclipse. I found just the, the ship itself just seems to have more character, um, more heart. Does that make sense when I say that? I feel like ships have like energy and heart and things like that. So um, yeah, the other ships just stood out a little bit more to me. The other thing that stood out was the shopping on board. So like I said, I've worked on ships and quite aware of the cost of things. Um, you would normally find a Royal Caribbean branded t-shirt or a sweatshirt for, you know, between, let's say, 25 and maybe $45. 50 at a push, right? That's kind of what you're looking at. On the Celebrity Edge, the shirts were starting, or the t-shirts were starting at like 40 45 and the sweatshirts were kind of creeping up into your high 50s, sometimes in the 70s, which I don't really understand what the difference was, because the, the significant difference was because it would say The Edge, instead of the silhouette, right? But surely the cost of printing can't be that much more. So it did seem like they were trying to push this as like a, a full luxury brand. Um, and I just, I didn't get it. I really didn't get it. The other thing they had was the uh, the ships, the model ships on board. Now on the ships that I've worked on, those would come, I mean, in a sale, you'd probably get them for around 25. And in a full price, non-sale time, maybe 40, perhaps 40. Um, on the Celebrity Edge, when we were there, these were going for closer to 80, maybe a little bit over $80, which I thought was extortionate for a model ship. And actually, we didn't buy one, so I don't know if it does them any favours, you know, it's got nothing to do with affordability. It has a lot to do with the value, and if I can buy a model ship somewhere else for 25 and you're going to charge me $70 more, why? Why? Okay, it has the little magic carpet that goes up and down, but I, I, can't, I don't believe that costs $60 to put in. So that was the one of the key downsides. Um, maybe not down, I don't know how to explain it, but if, you, if you're an avid traveller, I do believe there is an energy on a ship, like I've said before, and the edge was just a little bit empty of that. Now that could be because it's a new ship. I would definitely go back on the edge uh, to travel again so it didn't impede my you know my enjoyment but if you're gonna ask me if I prefer the edge over say the eclipse or the silhouette or the I don't know equinox or whatever no I don't I absolutely don't however beautiful ship so right here you've got the pretty epic pool deck with the running track or walking track you can see just there in the background uh, and they will take you past the hot tubs in the shape of a wine glass. Now I would say for anyone who has the pleasure of joining the Celebrity Edge, go ahead and do your best Dieter Von Tess impression <laughs> because hey, you're chilling, you're having a glass of wine in your own hot tub. Okay, incredible, incredible. Here's the side of the ship. They're just they're a little bit quieter if you if you prefer a quieter area on the ship. Um, and then heading into the spa area. Uh, this is always my favourite, although a little bit more humid because it's indoors. Uh, that roof area there though does open up. So pretty epic. Always a little bit quieter than the outer pool decks, but obviously not as good for tanning. <laughs> Um, the next area is this bit, which to me looks like teeth, which in turn reminds me of sharks, and sharks are my favourite animals. So, or my... animals? Yeah, animals. Um, but they are my favourite, and so this was my favourite thing to walk through, because I could talk about sharks every time I went through it. There was also, just to the side here, you can't quite make out here, but there was a burger bar with the best chips or fries, depending on your word pref preference um but burgers and they had plenty of vegetarian options there as well as meat meaty options that was great the other thing about the pool deck which i'm going to jump back to here was this butterfly a fantastic photo op well done uh, because it meant you know sharing on social media who loves a good marketing technique i do and I won't go into too much detail on the restaurants and bars, however, similar to all the other ships, um, plenty of specialty dining and complimentary dining on board, food was impeccable, always ready to cater for dietary needs, um, but I think that's becoming pretty standard now across the board, not so much a couple of years ago, 
now it's almost expected um, that they would serve at least a, a small portion of, uh, you know, vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, lactose intolerant, uh, friendly foods, which we see a lot. Now, this is an image of the Cafe El Baccio. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, but I'm going to assume it's Italian, which means the C is a ch, right? Am I right? I don't know. I may have just made that all up. <laughs> But this is the area where you can grab a great cup of coffee, sometimes a tea, if you fancy it, and it comes with a free slice of cake. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm the type of person that walks down a high street, and if I see a bakery, I just love looking at the work, like the artwork that goes into some of these cakes. I feel like it's more than just baking, you know, this is like an art form, and so we would often just walk past and ooh and ah at the cakes fairly often. <laughs> um, but yeah, stunning, so... Again, why the running track was a good one, because we spent a lot of time down here and then heading up to the walking track where we'd walk in circles for for however long it took to work off those pieces of cake. So that was great. Um, but yeah, loved this area. Another thing, as you can see, I've started running the video here a little while ago, is the Martini Bar. The Martini Bar was one of those places where you could kind of get dressed up doesn't matter whether it was a formal night or not on the ship. You could generally get dressed up, head down and just enjoy the entertainment, enjoy the classy drinks, just really take in the fact that you're on a pretty epic ship, let's be fair. I know I said earlier that it was a little bit lacklustre in terms of heart and that feeling, however, not trying to knock it, it, it was great fun. You can see right here the staff clearly enjoy what they're doing, they're clearly good at what they do, that's why they work on celebrity, right? Celebrity only only employ the best, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I did not work on celebrity, let me just say that, I did not work on celebrity. <laughs> I'm not trying to float my own boat, but I just find that the caliber of staff and officers on celebrity ships is second to none so far with the ships that I've been on. We'll see, we'll see if that ever changes. But great entertainment. Now talking of entertainment, there was one thing that I didn't quite get. I'd love to hear others' opinions on this. Maybe this is a, um, well it is an opinion, uh, but there was another area on the ship that's called the Eden. And so I'm gonna head these images and videos over to there right now. So the Eden, area is supposed to be an area that has, well not supposed to be, it is an area with lots of living plants and it's really beautiful in the daytime. Um, there's also a little uh, patio area that I'll show you a picture of right here that you can go outside and enjoy you know, a pretty quiet uh, drink, cup of tea, cake, whatever you're into. Um, very lovely. However, there was a show in this area that I still to this day will never understand and I hope somebody can enlighten me. But long story short, there was a show that probably lasted about 45 minutes and for what felt like a lifetime they had a couple of guests, not me thank goodness, uh, sh sit on this circle and close their eyes and so these people were just going around waving their arms about, wiggling, craw crawling on the floor for what felt like a lifetime. Um, and then after, oh, I don't know, it felt it was probably about five minutes, but it felt like 45, to be honest. At the end of it, they dinged a bell, and the people that were sat down had to open their eyes, and everybody clapped. I still don't understand what that was about, and maybe it was some arty thing. Um, not that I didn't appreciate it, I just couldn't, the, the story just didn't make any sense, and so... You know, that was a little bit odd. In fact, we were a little bit creeped out, to be honest, by the whole thing, because it was a little bit, like, eerie. Um, so soon after the bell dinged, we got up. Uh, luckily, we weren't sat near the front, so we were able to get up and kind of make way for other people that, that wanted a front row seat. And, uh, yeah, not, not sure what that was about. But anyway, I digress. So next, I'm going to show you this beautiful picture of a lemon. And why a lemon, I hear you ask? Well, we were in Capri. It was one of the stops that we made. Uh, we had to take a little boat to Capri Island. But there was a little cafe uh, just by the port there. And these lemons were the size of our heads. They were, <laughs> like, I mean, this picture doesn't really do it justice. But really, when you're trying to hold it, you needed two hands. And they served frozen lemon inside the gigantic lemon and so I needed to share that with you because if anything in life if you're going to experience anything go to Capri and have a giant lemon.
because they are beautiful. Anyway, let's move on and talk about the rooms for a second. So our favourite type of room is a veranda room or a balcony room. Uh, it's where we kind of fit the best. And so with this, we wanted to try the infinity veranda room. Um, which means that the doors within your room open up to make one gigantic room. So rather than stepping through a doorway onto the balcony, you kind of open up these double doors and it extends your room to the balcony. Um, do I prefer the infinity rooms? No, I do not. And I'll tell you why, because it has a floor to ceiling uh, window that you can put down. However, depending on what they're doing on the ship, whether in port or not, will control will they'll kind of control whether or not you can put the windows down there is an app um with the celebrity edge or with most ships nowadays but celebrity edge in particular had a more um features within their app and this meant that you could put your windows up or down if they were cleaning the windows you couldn't it wouldn't work right they would block them if they were in certain ports on certain sides sometimes you couldn't put it down so you don't have that if you have, if you have a veranda on a different ship right a non kind of infinity room ship they don't have that kind of control it's just an open balcony so having that fresh air sometimes that's needed um was lacking and I, I wasn't really a fan of that to be honest it also as much as yes like if you pull out a measuring tape it gives you that extra room um visually you don't see it visually you don't see the extra room because it's just an extension of your room right so if you've got like a room and then a door and an extra balcony to me that makes the room seem a little bit bigger than if you just have one gigantic rectangle but nonetheless, like, it's still there. It depends what you're into. I just definitely prefer the non-infinity room, regular veranda-style balconies. Um, but I did mention before about the app. Now, here's a really fun thing about the Celebrity Edge. And I believe with their up-and-coming ships from now on, um, Celebrity and Royal have a fantastic application that allows you to do more and more things uh, in terms of controlling your your trip and your voyage and so forth and one of the things on the edge was that most of the things in the room were digitalized which would include things like you could unlock your door from the app you could put the blinds up and down you could i believe you could put the balcony windows up and down when it allowed you to you could turn the lights on and off from your app and you could turn the tv on and off now believe me this is fantastic technology, but it did not stop me and my mother becoming completely childish and winding my aunt and my nan up. So we went out for this one, well, we were going out frequently, but this one particular time we had realised what the app could do. And so we went out, they're watching some, you know, boring TV show, probably EastEnders or something, I forget, but very boring. Um, sorry, EastEnders. <laughs> But you know what I mean, just as you're on a ship, let's not watch TV on a ship, let's go and explore. So they're on the ship, um, they're in the room, and we had the apps, and so we leave and we turn the lights off. So we hear them arguing with each other, saying like, you turned it off, I turned it off, you turned it off, they turned it off, you know, not realising the app does this, of course. We told them they're just not that IT or tech literate, so they just didn't understand. So then we turn the lights back on, we're outside the room, as I said, um... And then we turn the TV v volume up a little bit. Not too much. You can't hear it. The rooms are pretty um, well uh, insulated. But, you know, turn the TV up a little bit. And then my aunt's, like, trying to trying to get a hold of us through the uh, chat on the app <laughs> um, to tell us that there was something going on in the room. And then we had the curtains or the, the blinds closing. Um, <laughs> we turned the TV off. Um, so to be honest with you, we walked back into the room after a while because we were just giggling, you know, like children outside. I'm sure they knew it was us after a couple of giggles. Uh, but we went back in and they acted like everything was normal. So either poltergeists on, on ships are completely normal and people don't turn a blind eye to it, or they were just used to our antics. Um, but yeah, so aside from being a child... Or acting like a child on the ship. That is pretty cool, you know. You can be in bed, you're lying there, you're relaxing, and you think, oh, I need to close the blinds. Don't have to move. Just connect to the celebrity Wi-Fi. Um, last time I checked, it was free to use the app. So free, not Wi-Fi is not free. Um, if you want to 
access anything outside of the ship. However, if you're using the uh, Celebrity app, so far as being in 2019 is concerned, you could do so um, and use the app for free. So just to be aware, because a lot of people are confused by that. And I noticed quite a few people were not using the app because they were fearful that it was going to sign them up for the paid Wi-Fi on board. They are different, they run differently, um, so please be aware of that and if you're interested in trying the Celebrity app or on most chips, um, do your due diligence and ask guest services, but normally it will tell you on the app that you're using the free version of Wi-Fi, which once again means that you can use the app itself, but you can't go into, say, another third party website and start sending emails. That is a different type of internet package that you would need, and that does cost money, but the app is free. So just wanted to let you know that. Um, and yeah, and to preface this with all the fun and games we had, you could lie in your bed and sit there and think, oh, I need to turn the lights off, or did I lock the door, or I need to put the blinds down, or I need to open the blinds, whatever. You don't need to move. Your feet can stay up on your bed, EastEnders on, cup of tea, coffee, champagne, whatever floats your boat in hand, um, maybe a nice ice cold beer, and you just tap away on your app. It's like living like a king, if you ask me. <laughs> it's fantastic. Another thing that is pretty epic or fantastic on the edge is this magic carpet, which is an open air bar area. Um, and it would situate itself at different areas, different levels on the ship throughout the day, depending on where we were in port and what its use was. We used it mainly on deck five, where it became an open bar. Um, and surprisingly, we didn't have too much trouble getting a seat in there. Um, Sometimes it would get a little bit busy, but they also served a full champagne bar, or at least a pretty um, significant option menu of um, champagnes, which was amazing, always on ice, of course. Uh, so we thoroughly enjoyed that. And again, uh, stunning views from here, especially if you're coming into port, stunning views from up here. Um, often they would use the magic carpet as an embarkation deck. And so you would walk through the magic carpet onto the tenders that they had. And Celebrity Edge use their lifeboats as the tenders. Um, and I will say something here and now. When I worked on a cruise ship, and I believe it's, I don't think the rules would have changed that much, it is compulsory for management to um, train and get certification in lifeboat, uh, train all, all kind of lifeboat training, be it raft, um, you know, the motorized boats and so forth. And so I'm very well versed in the types of lifeboats that you get and their purpose. Their purpose is to save lives, right? That is it. And so you are not looking for anything comfortable on board. You're looking to survive, generally, if you're using a lifeboat. Celebrity Edge went above and beyond with their lifeboats, um, which, as I've said, were used as their tenders, and they are the most comfortable lifeboats I have ever seen, I have ever sat on. And to be quite frank, I think I was a little bit jealous of, you know, the lifeboats that I trained in did not look like this, um, <laughs> definitely did not look like that, and so, yeah, a little bit jealous, I think, but nonetheless, a very comfortable ride to any port that requires a tender, believe me, in fact, you know, if you put a, put a couple of coffee shops on there, a trolley, probably make for a great cruise, um, but very comfortable, so yeah, that was the Celebrity Edge lifeboats. All in all, would I recommend the Celebrity Edge? Yes, but with a clause. I would say, and this is obviously my own opinion, if you are new to cruising, I would definitely recommend trying out one of their other ships first. Um, the Eclipse, the Equinox, the Silhouette uh, would be my top choices. I feel like they have a lot more character. Um, maybe a little bit more of an established staff rotation. Um, just a little bit more heart. I find um, nothing against the edge. I just feel like if you are new to cruising, you'd get a little more out of that. Um, if you're a seasoned cruiser and you haven't tried the edge yet, I definitely would recommend trying it out. You know, same for new people. If you want to try it out, go ahead. I just think there's more, there's more soul to other celebrity ships. Um, would I pay to go on the edge again? I think they said this at the beginning. Yes, I would. Um, although I would prefer to try out the newer versions now that are coming out 
fairly soon. I believe the Apex is on his way out here um, and the uh, Celebrity Beyond as well. Both ships, I believe, are part of the same Edge family, same group of ships, um, just a little bit more updated. So I'd be more inclined to try those out. I love trying new things. Um, but would I do it again? Absolutely. Did I enjoy our trip? Absolutely. I loved it. Um, and you know, one thing I will say is when we traveled, I don't believe Captain Captain Kate was on board the Celebrity Edge. And I could be wrong. I feel like it would have stood out to me. So I don't recall her being on board. Um, and I do feel sometimes the, the energy of the staff and the captains and what they're creating on these ships trickles down through the officers and the staff on board, which then trickles down into the ship. And the energy of the ship kind of changes, right? The ambiance, the general consensus of a ship will generally change uh, depending on the top level management and so with somebody like Captain Kate who clearly absolutely seems to enjoy and love what she does is a very uh, happy positive energy type of person my assumption is that I give it a couple of months maybe now even you know we're what like a year later I mean guess because um, maybe because of Covid you know give it a couple of months when this is trickling down through the staff and this could be one of the best ships to sail on I don't know so here we go that's the end of this video let me know if you've ever been on the edge let me know what your thoughts were let me know if you've booked any of the newer ships like the beyond and the apex I'd love to learn about it I would also love to head out on a Disney cruise that is a dream of mine I uh, haven't been on one yet so if you have I would love to hear your recommendations down below your favorite ports to head out of um yeah let me know if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up um if you have any recommendations about how I can improve these videos, how I can answer different questions for you guys, uh, any other areas that you would like me to cover, let me know and I will do my very best. In the meanwhile, thank you for visiting, thank you for sticking with me, thank you for watching until this point, because this is long now, so thumbs up to you, well done for your patience. Um, yeah, and happy travels. Bye!